smoking cigars and a drink in their brandy in the White House and down at number 10. Halfway around the world, they're counting the moments left to live while they wait for the end. In Fairfort in England, a dozen B-52s have taken to the air. It's not Saddam Hussein, it's not the military who are dying. It's the very old and the very weak. <laughs> US military don't need to be here. They can refuel in England, they're merely pissing out their territory. You know, and getting Ireland complicit in this genocide. And it's important to come to places like this that look so normal. Today, you know, I saw a US Hercules being refueled at this airport. And you can treat that as business as usual, or normal, you can treat that as a complicit act in the ongoing war against the poor. What's at the end of those runways and the end of those planes is a lot of dead kids. Okay, they're the ones who die. I remember being in a hospital ward while the sanctions were imposed full force and the main victims of those economic sanctions were elderly people and sick people and children. A half million children died as a direct result of those economic sanctions. I remember during the 2003 war being at the bedside of a youngster named Ali Abbas. Put my arm around a woman because she was convulsed in sobs and she said how I tell him what I say. And when that youngster who had just been eating lunch with his family had survived a United States bombing that killed every other member of his family, came to consciousness and the doctors told him what had happened, his first question was, Will I always be this way? And I remember wondering about the United States. Will my country always be this way? The five people arrested in connection with this morning's incident at Shannon are 22-year-old Damien Moran, currently studying for the priesthood, along with fellow peace activists Kieran O'Reilly, 42, Nguyen Dunlop, 31, Karen Fallon, 30, all from 53 Rialto cottages in Dublin, and Deirdre Clancy, age 32, of Castle Avenue in Clontarf, Dublin. The charges against them follow an incident at Shannon Airport this morning in which further damage was caused to a US naval plane. The plane had been parked at a hangar after damage, estimated to cost over 500,000 euro, was caused to it in another attack last Wednesday morning. Gardaí seized a number of weapons, including lump hammers, an axe brief, cutting pliers and spray paint when they made the arrest this morning. To resist is to exist. And that if you're not resisting, how can you be sure that you've found a place in the world? By far the most important byline that I've ever produced is the one that's on the cover of a book about the pit stop plowshares. So it takes a lot of balls to cross that fence. Once you make the decision and you go through with it and stuff, you never know what the consequences are going to be. The cabinet has been discussing the security situation at Shannon Airport in the wake of a request by the Garda Commissioner for military support to protect it. The issue is also likely to be raised in the Thorin this afternoon. The Garda request followed two security breaches in less than a week by people protesting against the use of the airport by American forces. Martin Luther King who warns us that we are confronted by a choice between non-violence and non-existence. It's very hard to do such extraordinary actors and such extraordinary action of resistance at Shannon, so beautifully embodied tonight by Dave and Colm. Justice. And I remember that the most nervous time for me was actually driving along in the car before we arrived at the fence, and I was really touch and go at that stage. I said, this is really a bit beyond the beyonds. But anyway, we got under the gate and we got through the fence. And once I got inside the, the actual airport confines itself, an amazing peace descended. I knew nothing about direct action, absolutely zilch. I was into protest in a big way. 
and then I met the pit stop plowshares and Kieran O'Reilly and it's been a learning experience for me about direct action and all that but I'm a slow learner so it took me 13 years to actually aspire to doing anything with Dave. It's important to be here tonight just to realise that we're part of a tradition. It's a way of, of saying thank you to them. They sacrificed a huge amount on a personal level in the course of this action and particularly after it as well. And the problem remains of the US military in Shannon. A few people have come to me now and say, you know, how can we help? That does make a difference. Um, like Cullum said, it was important for him to have me with him. And I could say the exact same thing. Like for me, it was very important to have Cullum with me because it's a big step to do an action like this, and to do it on your own is, is tricky. So to have the support of somebody else doing it with you, so that you can share the burden of you know, going through it, and the worry, and the tension, and the, all the stuff that, that goes on in, in an action like this. And that support, yeah, it's, it's present there this evening as well. Jesus said that, you know, in weakness, I'll give you strength. So I really challenge God. But I wasn't feeling up to it and give me strength to do it when I stand in court. This airport has lost any status as a civilian institution. The railway lines that led to the town of Auschwitz were built for civilian use like this airport was. But they were demonised and changed and became a pit stop on the assembly of death and that is what Shannon Airport is today. These are the hammers that we used at Shannon Airport to disable a US Navy warplane en route to an illegal and immoral invasion of Iraq. Two of these hammers have long histories. Uh, these two were used at the beginning of the war in Iraq in 1991, the first Gulf War. Um, Bill Streit and Sue Frankel, Moana Cole and I uh, disabled a B-52 bomber and began to take up the runway in upstate New York. So they've been passed on to different groups who disabled the war machine. So they're often passed around the jury during trial. So they haven't been put beyond use. They're still available for disarmament. Yeah, they've got a long, beautiful history, so I guess they're like relics, really. The silence of the night is broken by the sirens as they gather to prepare for the end. And when the ground starts shaking, you'd be forgiven for mistaken if you thought for a moment this is hell. The enemy is not the soldier in the other trenches But the soldier with his gun to your head For he is just a pawn And he'll kill you for his wages And his uniform protects him from the shame The decision of this jury should be a message to London, Washington DC and the Doyle that Ireland wants no part in waging war on the people of Iraq. Refueling of US warplanes at Shannon Airport should cease immediately. Neutrality should be kept, it should be held. It's something that's really precious and it shouldn't be gotten rid of. They're making moves to get rid of the Irish neutrality. The Irish people are saying no. What we did was right and what other people feel need to do will be right too. All life is sacred. Every life, without exception, has something sacred in it. That means every life of every person in Iraq is as sacred as every life of every person in the United States and in Ireland. I want to call on all sectors of civil society in Ireland, especially the trade unions, to provide uh, resources for their workers who want to dissent, who want to stop uh, the complicity in war making in Ireland, to stop the refueling of the planes, to stop patting them on the back as they go out to wage war in Iraq. And uh, this is, uh, as Deirdre just said, the conscience of the Irish community has spoken and we call on the Irish government to seize this illegal activity because what our act was three and a half years ago was legal. <laughs>